If you're launching a new business and you're thinking about starting a new Google Ads campaign so that you can market your new business to get those sales or those leads that your business needs, this is the video you need to watch because what I'm gonna be doing in this video is I'm gonna be taking you through my eight step plan of what you need for success with Google Ads for your new business. Now, it's also really, really important to note that what I'm about to share with you is the journey that I've gone through because I've actually launched three separate businesses of my own using Google Ads. And then on top of that, over the last 15 years, I've also partnered with numerous different business owners who are starting their first business and really looking at investing in Google Ads to really launch the start of that business. Right from the start, I wanna let you know that Google Ads is an amazing platform that you can use to launch your business. But like any platform, you've gotta do it in the right way. Now, before I get to that eight step plan, I do just wanna go through two core foundational principles that you've got to have right. And the first thing that you need to know is that Google Ads can't save a bad business. And what I mean by that is that Google Ads is amazing at helping you target really, really high potential quality leads for your business. But if you're sending them to a website which is not converting or an offer which is just not priced right or the offer is not set right for the market, Google Ads is not gonna be successful for you. And unfortunately, that is a hard part when you're starting a business, is that you really need to be able to look at that really strong data loop and really see that, you know, if you are getting really high intent traffic going to your website, which you can get from Google Ads, and that's one of the great things I love about Google Ads, but it's going to a website that fundamentally does convert, that Google Ads campaign is gonna be wasted spend. So the first thing you wanna make sure is that you really are getting that in place. And then the second thing I really want you to understand when it comes comes to Google Ads before we get into that eight step plan is that you want your Google Ads campaign to be as profitable as soon as possible. The best way of doing that is really, really targeting on those core products or the core services which you think are gonna sell the fastest and also doing it in the correct locations. Let me give you an example. If you're an e-commerce brand and you might have hundreds and hundreds of different thousands of products which you're launching, but you know there's some core product categories that will do well in particular markets or if you're a service-based business, you know, rather than targeting all of your city, you may just wanna target one or two services in core suburbs or postcodes or zip codes, whatever term you use for wherever you are watching this from in the world. So what you wanna do is you really wanna focus on your high value or high profit products or services in the most likely areas that you're gonna see success. Because what you can do from there is that once you see profit in those areas, then you can increase your budget and start broadening out your campaigns targeting just different services and different locations. So what I really, really say there is that a lot of people like to do like us, a bit of a scattergun approach and you know just really, really try to see what's working, but that really weakens down your ad spend. Whereas what you're better off doing is taking that time to do a little bit of market research, seeing which products you think will resonate in the best cities or the best suburbs or the, the best locations and really, really honing your budget on those areas. Now, let me give you a real practical example of that. We're working with a business who was a local service business where they provided air conditioning maintenance air conditioning installations, and also solar power installations and maintenance. What they saw when we were doing the keyword research is that we saw there was a really, really big CPC, so the met they were paying per click, pricing increase from maintenance keywords through to installation keywords. So what we actually did with that business is rather than going for those installation keywords, we started focusing on air conditioning maintenance and also solar panel maintenance. And the reason for that is because they're able to get a lot more traffic and a lot more conversions. And the business owner knew that once they got into the resident's home, they were able to upsell. So for example, if they were looking at air conditioning maintenance, they were able to potentially sell them on the solar panel packages or vice versa. What I'm really just looking at is sometimes, especially if you've got a limited budget, really have a strategic think about the strengths of your business and how you can best tailor your Google Ads campaign for that business to make sure that you're not wasting any of that money. Remember, I know that when you're starting a new business that that startup capital goes away really, really quickly if you're not getting those inquiries and those sales coming into your business right from the start. All right, so once you've got those two core foundations in place, now let's go into my eight point plan of what you need to be doing with your Google Ads account. So the first thing is that you need to start with a search-based campaign. And this is true whether you're an e-commerce brand, whether you're a local service-based business, whether you're a service as a software business, B2C, B2B, doesn't matter, start with search. And the reason for that is because for the vast majority of new business ideas, you will find that there is already some really high intent search 
traffic. So what you're really looking at doing there is you're really honing in on that high intent search traffic because that's gonna be the easiest and the quickest traffic to convert. So you're not having to take them on a long winded journey of the reason for why your, your products are, are better or your services are better. You're targeting people who are already actively searching for your products or your services. So then you can really hone in on getting your ad copyright and your landing pages set right. Now, the second step is only for e-commerce owners and that is if you are an e-commerce brand, I would also be starting a shopping campaign at the same time. So you're either starting with search alone or a combination of search and shopping. And as I said, the reason for that is because that's just really, really targeting what we call that low hanging fruit of people who are already searching and looking to buy your products. Now, yes, those terms are more competitive, but what it also does let you know is that if if you're sending highly relevant traffic to your website and they're not staying online for a long time or they're not converting, you then know that there's something wrong with your landing page or your offer. Remember what I was saying before? So what you can really look at doing there is really looking at making some updates to your landing page, making some updates to your offer until you start to see those conversions coming through. So the reason why I like starting with search and shopping, regardless of what business you're dealing with, it gives you that fastest feedback loop of are your ad copies converting? Are your landing pages converting? Is your offer something that people are gonna buy? To make sure that you get those search and shopping campaigns set up correctly, what I want you to do is if you go to the link in the description below, you can get access to my free search campaign and shopping campaign setup guides so that you've got those campaigns set up in the right way because Google is easy to set up, but if you're not using the right settings, you can actually waste a lot of money really, really quickly. With those setup guides, we've got screenshots and some explanations to make sure you've set up your campaigns correctly. Before we move on to step three, some people do ask what should be my starting budget? And that is really, really gonna be relative depending on your average cost per click or the average spend that it's gonna cost you to get an individual click. What you'd be looking at is that you want each campaign to generally be 10 times the amount of a CPC. So after you've done your keyword research and you're seeing that that CPC is gonna come in at about $1.50, you wanna be starting with a budget at at least $15 a day. Or if it's an average of $2.50 a click, you wanna be starting at $25 a day. They're just bare minimums. Obviously, if you've got more budget, it would be more beneficial to increase that budget, but that's kind of a bare minimum of where your starting budget should be. All right, so the first two steps are either start with search or start with shopping or a combination of both. Now it comes to step three. And this is one which is the something that you would not do and that's that you would hold off on starting with Performance Max right from the start. I love Performance Max as a campaign type. Some of you here may not even be knowing what I'm talking about. Also, I would just say that in regards to Performance Max, it's a campaign that Google is heavily recommending at the moment. And what it does is it, it's one campaign which pushes your ads out to search, now shopping if you've got a shopping feed, display, YouTube, all the different networks. So you're seeing your ads everywhere. Now, this is potentially a great thing. But what you need to remember is that Performance Max was designed with one core goal end in mind, and that is to look at what's converting in your account and generate more conversions. But it's kind of like you don't want to start running before you can crawl situation. If you start a Performance Max campaign in an account that you don't have any conversions in it, you are going to see some wasted spend. And the reason for that is that you don't have as much control over a performance max campaign. Search and also search and shopping. You have more control and you get more data around the different keywords, the different ad copies. So it just gives you more control over your ad spend, especially when you're starting off with a campaign, you can see that information loop a lot quicker. That's why I would avoid starting with performance max. Now, down the track, once you're starting to get around 20 to 30 conversions in any given month, then you can start moving across to performance max. But right from the start, just start with search or search and shopping. And when you do go over to Performance Max, also make sure that you're excluding brand traffic. And after you've watched this video, if you go to my channel, I've got a whole heap of videos about Performance Max, which will give you some further information about the best test cases of when to start using a Performance Max campaign. All right, step number four, and that is get your location targeting right. Now it's important to note that when you're setting up any sort of Google Ads campaign, there's two core settings that you can use for your location targeting. It's called presence or presence and interest. Interest. The presence targeting is, let's just say that you want to target the New York area. If you say presence only, what that means is that you are targeting only people that are currently active or spend the majority of their time in New York. Whereas if you choose presence and interest, you can get people who have also shown search intent through previous services about New York. So that this may be someone who's looking at traveling to New York in the next couple of weeks or months, or someone who just has an affinity with New York. Generally for most businesses, I'm saying you're gonna be choosing presence only. 
So that's just something to really, really remember with that setting that especially when you're starting out, you don't wanna be wasting any budget at all and that's why you'd wanna set it to presence only. Now, it is also important to note that when it comes to Google Ads, the good thing is, is that you can target by countries, cities, states, zip codes. You can even target by a radius around a certain location. So if you've got a physical store, but you also wanna advertise that online, you could say, you know, 15 kilometers or 10 kilometers from the store location. So you've got a lot of different options with location targeting. Once again, like I said at the top of this video, really look at focusing when you're starting on those core suburbs or locations where you think you're gonna get the most response and positive response in terms of lead inquiries and sales for your new business. All right, number five, it comes to your ad copy. And with your ad copy, what you really, really wanna be recommending is that you're writing ad copy that converts. At the time of releasing this video, the good news is that Google has just started to give us more and more information about our individual headlines and individual descriptions that we can use inside of a Google Ads account. Once again, after you watch this video, if if you go to my channel, you'll see there's a whole heap of different videos that I've got about ad copy. But when it comes to ad copy, what I do wanna say is that there's really four core foundations that you need to get right. First thing is you wanna make sure that you've got a good keyword focus. The reason for why that's so important if people complete a search, you wanna make sure that your ad copy is relevant to what they're searching. Secondly, make sure you've got a bit of a brand mentioned in there. Thirdly, you wanna have a call to action. So what you're wanting to do here with your call to action is you're really wanting to preempt or introduce the idea of what you want them to do once they've clicked on your ad. So if you want them to give you a phone call, say that in the ad. If you want them to fill out an inquiry form, you tell them that they you know go to the website, fill out this inquiry form. So you're basically preempting and giving them the next step of what you want them to do. And then the fourth thing when it comes to ad copy is something that a lot of people forget. And this is all about having an emotional trigger. And what I'm talking about here is that you need to remember, especially with search ads, you don't have images, you don't have videos to really explain your unique selling point. So what I want you to think about is how can you get creative with your words? And a great way I like to say this is what can you say that none of your competitors can say or won't say? So this could be some accreditation that you have that other people don't have. And then that could really remove some different fear or give you some greater authority in that space. Or it could be your price point or it could be a different sale that you've got on at the moment. But really, really think about what are the reasons that you're giving someone to click on your ad right now and not just leave it and come back another time. Step number six. And this is all about conversion tracking. You really, really wanna make sure that you've got your conversion tracking set up right and that it is working. And the reason for that is because if you don't have your conversion tracking set up right inside of your Google Ads account, what this means is that you're just not getting the right data in order to be able to make the right decisions. If you don't have your conversion tracking set right, how do you know what search terms are giving you the most conversions? How do you know what ad copies are giving you the most conversions? And remember what we said a little bit before about Performance Max, some of these newer types of Google Ads campaigns are built around generating more conversions. So if that core data that they have as to in terms of what are your conversions is not correct, you're not gonna be able to use those campaigns to really scale your business. Now, I do know that when you're starting out in a new business, you might have a whole heap of other things on your plate. And this might be a perfect area where it is worthwhile for you to reach out to a different freelancer or someone that you can find online to be able to set this up for you because it is really, really important that you get your conversion tracking set up right. Now it comes to the last two steps, step seven and step eight. This what first one, step seven, is all about what I call the Google ad success loop. Reviewing your data, making some optimizations, and then waiting. So what you wanna do is you can think about it with Google Ads. What you're looking at doing is you obviously setting up your campaigns. Now, before you know whether that campaign is a success, you generally need to wait at least two to three, sometimes four weeks to get your initial data. Then you're making in some optimizations and then you're waiting again to see what the effect of those optimizations are. Then you're going through the process again. And that's why I call it the success loop because it's continuing on and it never stops. So what you wanna really, really make sure is that you've got that right balance where you are making some optimizations, but you're also giving Google time to really use and lean in on its automatic learnings to get the best results for your business. And then finally, the step number eight is to scale gradually. As a real general rule that when it comes to increasing your budgets, you don't wanna be increasing your budget by more than 20% in any given week. The only, you know, I guess probably caveat I have there is that if you are spending under $50 a day, so let's just say you're at a budget of $10, I have no problems with you doing increases in five or $10 lots, especially if you've got a low search impression share. So the main thing you wanna do is that once you get some results, you don't wanna like double or triple your budget in a day because what then happens there is you throw the campaign into a new learning flow and you can really lose that momentum that you've slowly been building up over the previous weeks and months. So. 
That's my crash course guide for you. If you're looking at starting a Google Ads campaign to launch your business, if you are, I do wish you all the best. It's because the very first campaign that I ever ran in Google Ads was for my first business. So I do know that it works. And what I do want to do is, as I said, I want to help you as much as possible. So make sure you follow that link in the description below so you can get access to my campaign setup guides for search and shopping campaigns. If you want to watch a video of me taking you through that process, I want you to go through and watch this video right here if you want to set up your first search campaign. Or if you're an e-commerce brand and you need to set up a shopping campaign, I need you to go through and watch this video right here. Thanks for joining me. My name is Aaron Young from Define Digital Academy. I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Bye.